present day Essex, Massachusetts is not a town that seems to hold major economic significance. A quick drive through town will only reveal antique shops, seafood restaurants, and a large amount of salt marsh. One hundred years ago, though, the town looked very different. For much of its history, the town of Essex was devoted to the industry of shipbuilding. Its shipyards produced many of the wooden ships that served as the workhorses of the American fishing industry up until about the 1940s. Essex shipbuilders started off creating small wooden dories for personal use, but by the mid-1800s, the entire town was devoted to the construction of massive wooden sailing ships. Although Essex profited a lot from shipbuilding, it was the town of Gloucester that really benefited from the industry. Gloucester fishermen used wooden fishing boats constructed in Essex to reel in catches that eventually gave rise to the port town's reputation as America's busiest fishing port. Gloucester's reputation as a fishing port continues to this day, except the wooden sailing vessels have been replaced by massive metal-hulled and diesel-powered trawlers. Not all of Essex's ships were used exclusively for fishing, though. An example of a ship that had many different purposes throughout its career is the Ernestina. It was constructed in 1894 as a fishing vessel by the name of the Effie M. Morrissey, but 20 years later it was converted into a cargo carrier. It was then bought by Robert A. Bartlett, an Arctic explorer, and was then used to explore the Arctic until his death. Then two brothers bought it with the intention to sail to Tahiti, but it was damaged in a fire. In 1948, it was bought and renamed the Ernestina, and was used to sail between the U.S. and Cape Verde Islands, and then between the islands themselves, until it was driven into the town of New Bedford, Massachusetts, where it is now a museum. A ship with a more typical career is the Evelina M. Goulart. Built in 1927, it fished the waters off of New England for nearly 60 years. Because of its late construction, the ship was engine-powered for much of its career. It had been in use up until 1985 when it was badly damaged by Hurricane Gloria. Its crew managed to get it to Fairhaven, Massachusetts, stripped it of its engine, and abandoned it. At some point, its pumps failed and it sank at the docks. Five years later, it was raised and brought to the Essex Shipbuilding Museum, where it is today. The Essex Shipbuilding Museum chronicles much of the shipbuilding history of Essex. Its collection consists of everything from small-scale models to the 85-ton Evelina M. Goulart and pretty much anything else related to shipbuilding. Of note is its collection of shipbuilding tools, consisting of everything from chisels to a massive bandsaw. With the Goulart as a backdrop, you can imagine the effort put into building the massive fleet of ships that came out of Essex. Besides the exhibits, it is interesting to see with your own eyes the place where ships were made and launched for hundreds of years. One thing that quickly becomes apparent, though, is the fact that the water into which the ships were launched doesn't even seem to be deep enough to fit ships of any size. In fact, further observation may lead one to conclude that there are plenty of better places to build and launch ships than in Essex. Not only is the water shallow, but there aren't even that many trees around. By the 1800s, the wood used in shipbuilding actually had to be shipped in via train. Still, the shipbuilding industry is a prime example of the perseverance that has powered America's economy from the beginning. The industry lasted long enough that by the time of the museum's founding in 1976, there were still many people alive who could remember the days when Essex was known for its wooden boats. Because of the relatively small gap between the end of the shipbuilding industry in Essex and the establishment of historical organizations such as the Shipbuilding Museum, many detailed records of the wooden shipbuilding industry exist today. This is very rare for any industry that has died out, and so shipbuilding serves as a vital reference for those historians interested in studying early American industry. Even more amazing is the fact that there are enough records for someone living in modern times to replicate the methods of wooden shipbuilding used in Essex. In fact, Harold Burnham does just that. His schooners, such as the Ardell and the Fame, were constructed at the historic Burnham shipyards next door to the Essex Shipbuilding Museum. He is the 28th member of his family to have constructed ships at the shipyard since its establishment in 1819. The ships are built in very much the same way as has been done for centuries. He even cuts the boards used in them himself. The Ardell is now docked at Harbor Loop in Gloucester, right next to Solomon Jacobs Landing. It is open for tours during the summer, the latest member in the Essex family of boats that goes back to the 1600s. Thanks to organizations like the Essex Shipbuilding Museum and people like Harold Burnham, 
Anyone in Essex County can see firsthand the products and process of an amazing industry that helped put America on the map by simply taking a short drive.